Hi everyone, welcome back. This week, I took a few weeks off because my teaching at the university has been really demanding. And this week, let's talk about aspirin, which is a topic that was requested by a few of you. A lot of people take aspirin regularly for cardiovascular disease prevention, but does it really work? Now, does the more expensive enteric coated aspirin work better? Or is it safer than the regular one? How bad is the bleeding risk? Does aspirin expire? And what happened if you were to take expired aspirin? Now, with all these questions in your head, now let's dive into this aspirin one on one lecture and answer them all. So the first question is that: What does aspirin do to your body in general? Now, aspirin is known by its generic name, acetylsalicylic acid. Now, its primary action include pain relief. Aspirin is an analgesic, which means it can relieve pain. It works by reducing the perception of pain in the brain. That is often used for headaches, muscle ache, dental pain, and various types of pain. Aspirin also has anti-inflammatory properties, which means it can reduce inflammation in the body. This makes it useful for conditions with inflammation, such as arthritis and certain types of injuries. And it is also a fever-reducing medication or antipyretic. Now it helps lower the elevated body temperature, makes it effective for reducing fever associated with various. Illnesses. Now, in addition to the major three effects, aspirin is also a blood thinner by making blood platelets less sticky. Now, it is this particular property that makes aspirin so different than other non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and naproxen. Now, this unique property also makes aspirin. Work to reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack, especially in individuals with a history of cardiovascular diseases. So the second question is: How does aspirin work to prevent cardiovascular disease? Now the evidence for aspirin use is referred to as secondary prevention. It means to reduce the risk of a second or additional heart attack or stroke. Now it is different from primary prevention, means using aspirin to reduce the risk of a first heart attack or stroke. Secondary prevention evidence is clear cut in this case and has over four decades of studies to support that the bleeding risk associated with aspirin is far less significant than the benefit of preventing additional strokes or heart attacks. However, the benefit of aspirin to prevent A first heart attack or stroke is more debatable and often depends on individuals, patients' factors. And the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends against adults 60 and older starting on low dose aspirin for the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease, and for people ages. 40 to 59 who have a 10 percent or greater risk of cardiovascular disease over the 10 years, it leaves the decision up to the doctors and patients. A recent study published in JAMA Network Open in July 2023 reported that daily baby aspirin, or in this case a low dose enteric coated aspirin at 100 milligram. Didn't prevent strokes in relatively healthy people aged 70 and older, and it actually significantly increased their risk of brain bleeding after falls or other injuries to the head by 38 percent. So, what about relatively younger people, meaning those who are between 50 and 70? 
a Thailand study published in September 2023 in, in the Nature Scientific Reports also find that a close to a five years follow-up study, high-risk people between 50 and 70 taking uh, aspirin every day had increased risk of long-term major cardiovascular events as well as higher bleeding risk. Now, these newer studies provide newer evidence that daily aspirin for primary prevention that means who have never had a heart attack or stroke could do more harm than good in some patients. But if you are someone who is already taking aspirin for secondary prevention of heart attack, is enteric-coated safer? So what is the differences between enteric-coated aspirin, baby aspirin, and regular aspirin? Now, the enteric coated aspirin is a specific formulation of aspirin that has a protective coating designed to prevent a medication from dissolving in the stomach. Instead, it is formulated to release the aspirin in the small intestine. The primary purpose of enteric coating is to reduce the risk of stomach irritations and gastrointestinal side effects that can be associated with aspirin, especially when taking at higher doses or over a prolonged period of time. And by bypassing the stomach and releasing the aspirin in the small intestine, enteric coated aspirin can help protect the stomach lining and hope to decrease the risk of bleeding. And low-dose aspirin, typically defined as a daily dose of 81 milligrams or 100 milligrams, and is primarily used for its blood thinning or cardiovascular benefits. It is commonly believed that the lower dose is associated with a lower risk of stomach bleeding and is as effective as the regular 325 milligram aspirin in secondary prevention. And however, a recent secondary analysis of a major aspirin uh, randomized clinical trial published in the JAMA Cardiology showed that the regular dose has a small but significant increase in major bleeding than the lower dose. And the enteric coating has no statistically significant differences from the regular uncoated aspirin regarding major bleeding and GI or gastrointestinal tract bleeding risk. Now, on the good side, the enteric coated or not, they are equally effective in secondary cardiovascular event prevention. Now, I'm not totally surprised that uh, the enteric coating has the same bleeding risk as the regular one, and here is the explanation. Aspirin, chemically, is an acid. If it is not coated, the acid component can directly irritate the stomach lining. However, once aspirin is absorbed into the body, it can inhibit the formation of something called prostaglandin E2, which is a compound that is responsible for stimulating stomach mucus and intestinal bicarbonate secretion. Now, these things are helpful to protect our stomach lining and as well as our intestinal lining. Now, regardless of the coating of the aspirin, all aspirin decreases the ability of the body to produce these protective molecules in the GI tract. Now, this explains why enteric coating may not necessarily be safer than the regular one. Now, the last question is that you may have an expired bottle of aspirin. Can you still take it? Uh, and what is an expired drug anyway, right? A drug expires when it breaks down into different molecules. This process can happen to all drugs, and it is a spontaneous process because the drug can react to oxygen and moisture in the air. Now, For aspirin, it breaks down into salicylic acid and acetic acid. Now, acetic acid is regular vinegar. It is basically harmless at a small dose. Now, this is why you can smell vinegar when you open a bottle of aspirin. 
Salicylic acid is still an active drug in terms of its effect on reducing pain and inflammation, but it is not as strong as aspirin. It is also used in many cosmetic products to lift dead skins. Now, suppose someone is taking an expired aspirin for pain, for fever, or for inflammation. The salicylic acid will still provide some degree of relief. However, salicylic acid is not an antiplatelet drug. It does not make blood platelets less sticky. So, suppose someone is taking aspirin for secondary prevention of heart attack, an expired bottle of aspirin. Even though it still contains some amount of aspirin, would not work as well as an unexpired one. So it is better to avoid taking aspirin from an expired bottle. So to sum up this video, aspirin low dose does carry a lesser risk of bleeding compared to the regular dose, but anterior coated one is not necessarily safer than the non-coated one. Now, in terms of the effectiveness, there were no differences in high or low dose, anterior coated or not. And people who had a heart attack or other serious cardiovascular events should take a daily aspirin to prevent additional events. Now, if someone is above 60 and is relatively healthy without a history of heart attack or other cardiovascular events, taking daily aspirin to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Could do more harm than good in the long term. And for someone between 40 to 59, the evidence for primary prevention benefit is weak, even for people with some risk factors. Now that is all for this week. Let me know in the comment section if you have more questions on this topic, and please feel free to leave me. Topic request in the、uh, comment section as well. Now, again, the goal of this channel is to help people to make informed health decisions and to live a healthier life. Now, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Hopefully, it's not three weeks later. I am not as busy now. All right, take good care, and see you next time. Bye.